Aloha, everyone. I'm Nikki Kiyohoho, CEO and co-founder of the Direct Selling World Alliance and Coach Excellence School. And I'm so happy to have you here with this for how to replace burnout with empowering others. So, and empowering yourself, that's also part of this. So we got a lot to cover today. So make sure that you get your pen, paper, and you're ready to take notes because it's going to be some good things that you're going to come up with. I've got a couple of notes here. We've got Austin, Texas here. We've got another Texas person. Gina, you're from Southern California. So glad to have you with us. Andrea Nashville, uh, Hershey, Pennsylvania. I love that. I have a secret for you. My mother dated the Hershey man, well, one of the Hershey brothers or whatever, sons or something. I couldn't believe it. We found it out late in life. I think she was a player. Uh, St. Louis, Quebec City, Canada. Thank you, Canada, for calling in with us today. Uh, Georgia, so we have a lot of parts of the country. I haven't seen my Aussies yet, but I'm glad that all of you are here with me right now. So let's get started and get things moving. So let's do the definition of burnout. You know, if you think you know what this is, or if you felt it, type into the box what you think that might be. A word that would come to mind when you think, I'm burnt out, what is it? And let's see if we can get anybody that's got the real definition stale oh that's a good one Overcommitted, frustrated you've got a lot of good words here exhaustion and boredom oh that i'm gonna read that more with the with the norm uh bored tired and calling in from ohio great defeated stuck withdrawn man you've got a lot of words i think you understand what burnout is withdrawn that's another interesting word so i'm going to give you what the real definition is that comes out of the off of, off of Google, I think is where I found it. Burnout is characterized by emotional exhaustion, emotional exhaustion. Being burnout means feeling empty and mentally exhausted, devoid of motivation and beyond caring. Ooh. So here's a word that you may want to, and overwhelm came up there, I knew it would. I want you to understand something. Sometimes we repeat to ourselves, I'm burned out, I'm burned out, I'm burned out. Whenever you use the words I am, whatever you say behind that follows you. So you're feeling burnt out and it doesn't feel good. Is it really that you're burnt out? Are you burnt out or are you maybe just bored in this moment? Are you maybe tired in this moment? Are you a little anxious? Maybe you're not having fun. There's a lot of things that have less sting to it than the word burnout. So try and find a different word so that doesn't happen. And this may not be you. You may not be feeling burnt out. You've got people on your team that are feeling burnt out. Are your spouses, are your children? There's a lot of reasons people get this feeling. But one of the first things to do is stop using the word because that isn't gonna serve you. Find a different word that will describe it better. So one of the biggest reasons leaders leave direct selling is burnout. They leave our profession because they feel they are burnt out. You know, they thought they needed to be everything to everybody. They thought they needed to be the answer queen or king. They thought that they had to be doing it all. But really one of the biggest reasons that this happened is because they don't have support at home. They, that causes burnout. So, and there are several other causes around this, but that lack of support at home is one of them. So here's some, some things that you may notice that your, your business performance is declining, your efficiency is dropping, you're losing confidence that you can achieve your goals, you avoid career-related tasks. There's several of these that are happening and what, what people don't realize is that, that they're, it's, it's eating away at their energy level. You feel exhausted and you've lost interest in your work. It's not fun anymore. If that's part of what's happening, that, that's a challenge time for you. That's a challenge to really look at what's going on. So what can I do to prevent burnout? There are things all of us can do. And, and be aware first that it's coming on and then, okay, what do I do about this? Here are some thoughts and I'd love you to put one in the chat box if you've got another one. You will prevent burnout 
if you invest time with your loved ones. Now, it's important not to overdo it because see, there are a lot of people that are all or nothing people. They think I got to be all in with my family or all in with my work. No, you can do both. You also must have some alone time, time to reflect, time to write in a journal, time to think, time to just be in peace, time to go for a walk by yourself. And don't feel guilty when that happens. Some of you felt guilty tonight when you came on this call because you thought, oh, here I am doing something for my business again. And, you know, and I've got my partner or my kids are, are out there and I'm, I'm feeling bad. Don't. When you take care of you, you have a lot more to give to other people. And that's what this is doing. You came to this call because you knew something was going on or you had people in your life that were feeling this and you wanted to know what you could do to support them. Here's another one. Make enough time for restful sleep. Find a way for you to sleep. Now, sometimes I'll put a pillow over my head so I can't hear anything and I, there's no light that can get in, blackout curtains. Some people do white noise or uh, like meditation music while they're sleeping. Whatever, a good bed, whatever is good for you getting enough sleep. I know when I was young, I didn't. And I now am very conscious of it. Because in order for us to be fully functional, we've got to rest our brain, rest our body. That's important. Try to get some physical activity in each day, whether that's walking. And, and you know, my son carries his phone in his pocket when he walks and he does about 30,000 steps a lot. It's either 30,000 or 300,000, but he does a lot of steps. I mean, like people go, are you kidding me? It, it's thousands and thousands of steps that he walks every day just with what he's doing because he's very conscious of his health and wanting to take care of it. I don't take my phone with me, so I don't know if I'm, if I'm doing a good number of steps or not. I just know that sometimes being out in nature is good for me for physical activity. And I have these little two pound weights here right next to me. And I'll, there's certain exercises you can do with those little weights over your head that you, you, don't, you don't even have to move, but you're doing something to care for yourself. Eat nutritious meals and stay hydrated. Have your water right next to your desk all day long so that you know you're drinking that water. And those nutritious meals, you can get little snacks that are, that are vegetables or cheese or fruits or something to keep yourself. Because sometimes people say, oh, I forgot to eat. Well, that isn't good for us. And you're not going to lose weight like that either. People think, oh, I'm going to lose weight if I don't eat. No, not really. So learn, uh, you know, med meditation or yoga or other mindfulness activities for improved relaxation. All of these things will support us, giving our heart a rest. I know when I was young, I, I've always been able to run circles around people. My energy has been very, very high. And my, I can remember one of my sisters, not the one that's like me, but the one that's totally opposite of me. She'd say, Nikki, you're just going to die. You work too hard. <laughs> You know, there's no way you can keep this up. It's not good for you. I'm going to outlive her by 20 years. I'm certain of it. So it's everybody enters, everybody's energy level is different. And, and I've always just loved being doing. There's nothing wrong with that unless you're not doing these things that you see right here. Then it can become a problem for you. So be aware. Everybody. Be aware of what you're thinking about. Because what you think about, you bring about. And if you say, I'm exhausted, I'm just curious. When, when I say, I'm exhausted, when you say, I'm exhausted, what thought comes up for you? What do you how are you feeling? When you say, I'm exhausted, how are you feeling? Anybody? My guess is exhausted. That's how you're feeling. <laughs> and if you're feeling exhausted, it is not going to do you any good. So be careful with those words, I am. So what you think about, you bring about. What you think about, you bring about. What I want to see happen for you is that you take care of your thoughts. This is, it's, your emotions are matter. People move to action based on emotions. But guess what? The emotion starts with your thoughts. If you've got stinking thinking going on, you're probably not going to have some real good thoughts happening. And you're not going to have some results that you are looking for. So manage your mind. Manage your thoughts. 
you know that thought isn't serving you, ask yourself this question. What's the opposite of that? How would I prefer to be thinking right now? How would I prefer to be feeling right now? You won't burn out when you take care of your mind and your body, both. But when you take care of it, you're not going to get to that place of exhaustion. I, I Most people that have known me, and I, I talked to several of my friends yesterday that have been best friends since elementary school. And I just felt a need to talk to them. And I reached out to them. We usually do a Zoom once a month and we missed it last month. So all these people are doing things like knee surgery and they can't seize, they're getting their eyes lifted and they're doing, I mean, they're doing all this stuff. And, and as I was, I, I was thinking of all these surgeries, all these people are doing, we didn't get to do our Zoom. And I thought, man, I'm so lucky. I, I've, I've had one surgery in my life. One, other than having my babies, that's it. So I know clean thoughts and managing your emotions affect the results that you have in life. I just want you to have that joy of feeling good, being good, especially when you are a seasoned individual. We're not old, we're seasoned well. So how to move beyond an all or nothing mentality, because this happens a lot. People that go into burnout almost always have an all or nothing mentality. So what they look at is I need to do it all. Or I won't do it at all. I won't, I'll do nothing. So I need to clean my office. Oh, it's such a big job. I'll do it later. And they don't do it. Or, you know, I, I really want to get my inventory in control and know what I've really got in my house. What kind of inventory do I have? And, but I, it's a big job. So instead of breaking things down into bite-sized pieces, they think they got to do it all. So it doesn't happen. I'm, I'm asking you to look at whatever big project you have. A example, cleaning off your desk. What is one thing that you could do if you were thinking about cleaning up, up your office? What one thing could you do? What one activity could you do? Cleaning up your desk, for example. What one activity could you do? See if there's a bottom to it. Now, that's a good idea just to see if you can, it, uh, hey, it's brown. This is exciting. That's progress. Set a timer. Thank you, Mary. Uh, that was Andrea. Set a timer so that you put five minutes every day, five minutes onto it. Um, one note a day, taking care of one thing. Put receipts away. We're moving to a different home. I want to see who oh, this is. This is you, Missy. Moving to a different home in a year. I'm going through our area one area a day and keep or pitch things. Very good idea. Don't wait till the last day. Just because then you'll just move a bunch of junk that will go back into that garage or into that storage unit and it'll never happen. Throw it all in a box so it disappears. Okay, I know people do that. So I'm going to say this to you. The box doesn't disappear. The stuff does. And then you got boxes and boxes of stuff sitting in the corner. Move things I've not used in a month. They don't need to be right there on your desk. When we have new carpet this summer, we had to move everything downstairs and we cleaned house. Good, as long as you didn't keep it all downstairs. <laughs> so it's taking and deciding, what can I do with this? I don't have to have it all done. I can do one thing, setting a timer and make a decision. On that piece of paper on my desk, I'm either going to dump it. And when you dump it, you'll pull it back out of the garbage. You'll have regrets later. So shred it. It's really hard to put it all back together. So put it in the shredder, shred it, get it out of there but completely. That, that's get gone. Delegate it. Who else can do something with it? And do something. Is, if you do something with it, it's all, that's a decision. Make a decision. What am I going to do? I have a 1099 part-time job. So I am motivated to donate. That's a beautiful thing. Donate as much as you can. And I'm going to tell you, we have a, a women's shelter in the next town over. And I, I've just given them a whole lot of things. And you know what? They will even take, you know, lipsticks. I have a sister that had every color of lipstick in the world. And she gave them to me. And I only need one of each one. I don't need 10 of each one. And I called them and said, can you guys use lipstick and nail polish? She had 10 of one color. I, I, I need one. 
anyway, so I asked if they could use them. They said, yes, please. We clean all those off and sanitize them. And that's a big deal to these women. They need sheets. They need towels. They, we save sheets that we know we're going to never use again. We're sick of them, but we've got them stuck away somewhere. These are people in need right now. Go to those shelters, give them. But I'm also doing some speaking for them. And, and I would highly recommend that you do that. Because women need support and you're good about, about all that. The veterans pick up free. Let them come pick it up. I donated about $20,000 of products from my former life. Beautiful. I'm so glad. You know what? Just give generously. Clean it out. Get it out of there. Do something with it. It doesn't need to be a whole bunch. Just every month, say, I'm going to give two garbage sacks full of something and, and give it to people that really could benefit from We, You know, we look in our closet and we have like 10 sizes. Start with the teeny weeny up to the giant. And we have this vision that someday I'll be back to the teeny weeny. I'm never going back to the teeny weeny. We got to let go of it, folks. Give it to someone else. A friend who organizes says to do a sack a day, a week, sack a week. That's so good. One person's junk is another person's treasure. We have so many smart women on this call today. I'm so excited for all of you because you're getting this. We don't need to do it all. Do something. Make progress. Celebrate the progress. Let go of perfectionism. I want to talk to you about this for a minute because that is a big reason People feel anxiety. People feel, um, you know, burnt out. It's because they feel like they're not enough. And perfectionism started probably with your mom or your dad. And then, you know, we didn't want to be mom and dad. We didn't like that. We, I'll never be mom or dad. I'll never be like that. I'll never be. You're exactly like that. Because you haven't figured out how to stop being a perfectionist. When you are a perfectionist, you think everything has to be done just so. That's a code word for perfect. Just so. And what's in between this amazing, perfect situation and doing nothing? There's a lot of space in there. So just let go of some of that perfectionism and watch how people around you will respond. You know, we don't maybe mean to be perfect, but we teach your kids how to make the bed perfect. And if it isn't quite perfect, then that gives us a chance to tell them it's not perfect and you need to go do it again. Who wants to be the nag queen? I do not want to be the nagger. I, that isn't joyful for me. So I sometimes have said things like to my grandkids if they're staying over here. So what one thing can you do right now to make that bed look fabulous? And they go tuck the sheets in and they'll pop up with the pillow. It's, 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 and then how resourceful are you? How, that, how great is it that you figured this out? It's an opportunity to be an encourager and an influencer, not a nagger. And I'm sure none of you are naggers, but there are people in our world that are that way. So perfectionists used to be me. Now it's about being excellent, not perfect. I love that. And I define excellence. So are you moving towards perfectionism or excellence? That's a great coaching question to ask somebody. Are you moving towards perfectionism or excellence? And it's very striving for perfectionism or excellence. Because who is perfect? I'm just saying nobody on this earth. We're perfect. So there'll always be something that could be a little better, a little better, a little better. So we keep finding fault in ourselves. Hmm. I just started reading the book, Grace, Not Perfection. That's a, I haven't read that yet. Uh, my daughter's name is Grace. So I'm going to go get that book because here's the thing. I'm definitely not a perfectionist because I learned a long time ago. It was hard on me to be that. It made me feel like I was, I, it was an uphill battle. I would never get there. And I didn't lose. So I'm not a perfectionist. I do strive for excellence. And I want other people to strive for excellence around me and not be, just not care. But you got to be careful with your judgment coming in there because to them, maybe that was progress. We don't know. When you wait to have everything perfect, you miss so much. That is so true, Kathy. Thank you for sharing that, that thought. There was a TED talk I watched today. She said, we train girls to be perfect and boys to take risks. 
If you think of it, put the name of the person in the chat box because that is so true. We train girls to be not just perfect, but to be multitaskers, to be always moving, to be doing, caring for everybody else. We, there, there's so much of that that is true. At least it was, and hopefully it's better now. And for boys to take risks, you know what? I think girls can take risks too. So that is an important lesson for us to learn. See, tonight isn't just about you and your business and feeling burnout in your business, because when you feel burnout, it's not just in your business, it's in your life. It's with your family. It will show up and they know it and they, don't, they think it's them. And it's something that's really going along, going on with you right now. If you think that something is already perfect, you will conform, will hardly move forward. Isn't that interesting? Thank you, Josephina. And Lay says, one college teacher said, boys will come in and say, there is something wrong with my project. Girls say there is something wrong with me. Ooh, that's scary. How did this happen? We can be the movement to get people to see other possibilities. I, I just really pray for all of us that we can stand up and allow other women to walk into their greatness. Uh, Ariella says she was raised like a boy. Well, that was probably some good came from that. Uh, Phyllis says, I work in an elementary school and we're encouraging excellence and risk with both boys and girls. Yay. Phyllis, I've got to tell you, and you learn the coaching skills that will just support you so much in your, in your work with the children. I, I'm excited that, 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 that your school is progressive that way. That's beautiful. So being able to let go of being perfect and be the best I can in the moment under these circumstances. That's a way of letting go and forgiving yourself because sometimes we think, oh, I could have done so much better. I can remember in school, I got an A minus and to be upset that you got an A minus versus celebrating that you got an A minus, you know, it was like, oh, what did I do wrong? You know, you know, how come she didn't like it? You know, what, what, where did I screw up? All that stuff that we said, it goes on into the rest of our life and we don't have to carry that forth. So we got that perfectionism is maybe not the way to go. So here's a question to support you with not thinking about all this burnout stuff. What else can you release? What can you let go of besides perfectionism? What can you say, this really isn't important. This really doesn't matter. Sometimes we focus on the things that, that we think need to, to um, that, that are so important that we, we struggle over it. You know, I had a mother-in-law that ironed the kids' socks. She ironed everything. Everything was perfect, ironed. And, and when we got married, my husband says, Nick, I haven't seen the iron. Do we have an iron? <laughs> I said, oh, I'm sure it's somewhere. I buy things that you wash and wear. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to iron your socks or your underwear. Unbelievable. So is, how important is that? What can you release? Saying to yourself, how can I release this? Sometimes we hang on to the past for so long and we carry it into our present, and into our future. If, if somebody that had a divorce, they think, oh, what did I do wrong? How come it didn't work? You know, what could I, I have done better? You know, who all did it hurt that I did this? It's the first divorce in my family. And we play that bad video over and over and over again. Release that puppy. That is in the past. That's done. I've got today, the present and the future to look to. That's what's going to keep me going. Does anybody have something that you would like to release and you know you haven't? A voice, something else. Be yourself, true to yourself and let go of what others may think. Boy, that is a big one. Sometimes we hang on to what everybody else thinks about us and their idea about us. We have no control over what they think about us. They're gonna think what they're gonna think. And if I'm so worried about what they're gonna think, then I can't be me. 
to be able to release that you the burnout will will deteriorate release what i can't control release guilt I know there are people that feel guilty when they're working their business and they think they should be with their family. And then they're feeling guilty when they're with their family thinking they should be working their business. So they're in guilt all the time. Guilt holds us back. Guilt makes us feel heaviness around us. You know, is it worth it to be living in guilt? Especially if it's something from the past, you can't do anything about it. You can learn from it so that I, will, I won't repeat that performance, but guess what? I can't live in that guilt and expect to be moving forward in life. Well, you guys, you have the queens of comments tonight. I love this. Let me keep going down this list. Holy smokes. Uh, can we go back to perfectionism because we feel like we're not enough? How does one address and delete decades of this being autopilot of thoughts? Thank you for, for asking that. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm sure so that there are other people that are feeling that way. When you have been, uh, had the thought that I need to be perfect and it's embedded in you because it went from your childhood, then you went on and, as an adult of college and then you went on into with your family and then with your business and with everything else. You know, if that has been the autopilot for your thoughts, you must become very conscious of your thoughts know what you're thinking and and here's a little thing that you can do too like your towels in your bathroom you're the person that folds them just so and hangs them over the rack and they're on there just perfect and they're clean they're beautiful take those towels and do this hang them sideways and let it go for a day you can look at them but walk away walk away they don't need to be perfect nobody died from a sideways towel it will be okay because if you can learn to let some of those small things go, the bigger things become easier to let go. I hope that was helpful. That I, I see people just go through life never feeling like we're good enough. The worst part is, though, that that transfers to their kids, to their team, to everybody else around them. You know, there's old sayings like, what is that one? It do, it, it, either do it right or don't do it at all. And we wonder why we got an all or nothing thought. Do it right means do it my way, do it perfectly. Get rid of those sayings. We carry those through our whole life and then they transfer to everybody else. Nobody really wants to be around a perfectionist. And I know that's hard for you to hear if that's you. The reason they don't is because you don't realize you're expecting it from them too. And you may not even say it, but if you are performing that way, I can tell you, they think you expect it, even if you've never said it. So just be aware of that. I like to pretend I'm talking to myself as I do with students, encouragement, acknowledgement, and fun, happiness, along with I can do it. You know, good for you, because guess what? That means that you're taking care of you. So someone's going to let go of guilt. Someone wants to let go of what I can't control. Uh, if uh, Here's another one. Being the best at what we do until we are burnt out. Oh, being the best, being number one until we just can't do it anymore. I, I said that somewhere in here. It, it, this burnout comes from, it can be driven by ambition to work harder to achieve success. Frequently at the cost of our personal life and even your health. So overachieving, perfectionism, living out of harmony, all those things called our cause burnout, but it's driven by that ambition. If I just work harder, if I just work harder, well, ask yourself, how can I work smarter? We can't work ourselves to the bone. You don't want to be, you know, burn out and can't enjoy life in your senior years. It is so fun to be um, a wild woman. A wild woman is a woman of wisdom, 50 and older. You have learned some things and then you can enjoy your life and enjoy that time with the person you love the most or the, your children, whoever else it may be. Oh, someone asked me to enable the transcription. I'm talking too fast again. Sorry about that. So I'm saying to you, uh, I, I hope, yeah, you can see it. 
So what I'm saying to you is this. Sometimes we expect more from of ourselves than we do of anybody else. We think we must outperform and be better than everybody else. Release that. I did the best I could under the circumstances at that time. And I'm going to tell you something. I see it particularly women comparing themselves to other people. That other person's life situation may be very different than yours. You may be taking care of an ailing parent. You may be having a husband that is having depression and, and, and needs a lot of support right now. You may have a child with special needs. You may be homeschooling. You may not be in good health. Your circumstances could be very different than that person's. Let go of comparing yourself. If you're going to compare, it is called internal sorting. And internal sorting is when you look at the qualities of that person and you look for what you have that is like them. Hey, they're creative, so am I. They're ambitious, so am I. They're fun, so am I. Versus, boy, she's further along than I am. She's making more money than me. She's prettier than me. All the stuff that we've done, release that. And be okay with where you are under these current circumstances. When circumstances are different, your life may be very different. But right now, be okay with who you are and know you're doing the best you can under the circumstances at this time. That's a, a big thing. Uh, here's a couple of other thoughts. Um, being the best at where you are until we are burnout. out, not, we gotta let go. You can release competition. Now, I will tell you this, in life, if you have a little D or a little I behavioral style in you, you naturally have a little bit of competitive spirit. Now, you don't want to play games with me because I'm very competitive in those games. But if I don't win, I'm okay. But I play to win. But I don't go to competition comparing that person to me with where they are and what they're doing. So competition can be healthy. It can also be unhealthy. Uh, but we, we, we got to let go of always having to be first. We don't need to be first. Be yourself, true to yourself, and let go of what others may think very true. I like to say, embrace the grace. And you know, I, I love that. And, I, and because that's my daughter's name, it's very meaningful. I like to embrace with grace, embrace, embrace life, embrace who you are and embrace that you are a gracefully assertive woman. You're not a competitive at all costs. You got to beat everybody. You're gracefully assertive. Hmm. And, and, and you can release your childhood. That happened to you in the past. Maybe those people did not know. Maybe they had been treated that way and they didn't know how to actually be a parent. So we can't do anything about that. Let go and figure out what I can do now. What do I have that I can do now about that? Release the need to always be in control is a big one for a lot of people. In fact, you can't control. The only thing you can control is you. What you think, what you say, what you do. My dad used to say, what makes you think, what makes you think you're special. Oh, wow. You know, I know there are other people that have, what makes you think you're so special? It's interesting. In, if we can train the children today, that if somebody ever says that to you, in your mind, you don't have to say it out loud. That person says that thing to you. What makes you think you're so special? Because I'm kind. Because I'm respectful. Because I care deeply about other people. I'm special because I, I can give love and receive love. If we could teach them how to respond to something like that, because sometimes even kids say that. And right now we are having you know, 300 and some children in America right now committing suicide every month. We've got to do something to get them to think differently. We are business people. And yes, this is about business. But when you apply these skills to your entire life, your life is easier. And you can make a bigger difference for more people. So please be that person who steps into your greatness 
takes care of you so you can model for other people. That's what it's all about. Your dad didn't know because you are very special. I know you, Phyllis. You're a very special person and you deserve to recognize that. And thank you, Lee, for putting in the, um, the TED Talk. Uh, everybody grab that. It's in the chat box right now up a little ways. Brenda says, um, to not be so hard on myself. I need to be more positive. Sometimes we took over the job of somebody else that was difficult and hard on us. What I'm saying to you is if we teach people how to treat us and when we are not kind to ourselves, we're letting other people know it's okay to be the same. So if you choose to be more positive, Brenda, you really think about your self-coaching questions. And if you haven't done that, there's a CD on the website about self-coaching. I'd say get, get that thing and start practicing those questions. You know, what am I most excited about in life? Who loves me? Who do I love? And you're going to get this recording so you can listen to these again and capture all this. You don't have to write everything down. Don't make yourself a nervous wreck and go into overwhelm because you can't get everything I'm saying. So you'll get the recording. Anyway, so ask yourself better questions. To be more positive with yourself, it's honoring yourself. What, what are my best qualities? You know, who am I kind to? Who will I make smile today? Those are all things to manage your emotion. So good. And we got an amen from Diane. Thank you. Missy says, I'm working on releasing anxiety. Oh, anxiety comes from a lot of places. Anxiety comes from perfectionism. Anxiety comes from we're not doing enough. Anxiety comes from I should be making more. I should, I need to, I have to, those kinds of words. Learn enlightened vocabulary, get rid of them. You'll have less anxiety. And at the end, I'm, I'm going to ask someone that, that purchased our Telefriend product with our that is a, um, it's for, a, a, for people that have anxiety. It's telebehavior. You get your own therapist, your own counselor. It's, and it's $49.95 a month. That is worth it. You can go every day. If you don't know how to get rid of your anxiety, two, th two thoughts. That's one thought to, to get start working with that counselor over Zoom. And the other thought is get a coach. The other thought is start asking yourself better questions and honoring yourself and finding places where you take the time to celebrate. People that have a lot of anxiety in their life don't celebrate because they're so busy being anxious about what they're not getting done and what they're not doing, but they're not enough, where they're not enough. So celebrate, find a little celebration every day. It's a great question to ask at the dinner table to your family. What are, what are you all celebrating today? Where was a baby win today? Where was there a little progress in any area of your life today? What was that? I've got so many questions and comments in here. I don't know if I'm going to get through all my slides, but I'm trying to answer everything I can. With age comes wisdom. You realize at a certain point in life where you don't care any longer <coughs> what other people think. <coughs> it's refreshing to feel that way. You know, I don't know that you ever completely let go of what other people think. I just don't focus on it. I want people to like me. Some won't. <clears throat> Pardon me. I can't mute fast enough to cough. I got to grab my water. Drink lots of water. Have it next to you. I put it right next to me last time I spilled it. I have a little reach. Everybody take a time to get a little water. Guilt is a useless emotion. Thank you for that comment. That is so true. Release bad experiences that can stop you from going on. Everybody has bad experiences. We just handle them differently. You know, I, I went, one time there was a lady, I, I broke my back while I was speaking in Dubai and, it, and I was in a wheelchair and it was a very um, humbling experience that someday I'll tell you about it. But basically when I left there, I had to go on a, on a three week tour in Australia. So I left Dubai in a wheelchair and I got on the plane. I was walking on the plane with another woman and that woman was just angry and she had her canes. I'm being wheeled in and she's got her canes and she's walking just mad. And I thought, 
oh, I'm so sad that she's so angry. I, you know, I, I hope she's okay. And then I also had just, a, this was a negative thought, not very positive. I said, I just hope she's not sitting next to me. I don't want her energy on me. I, I, you know what? Sometimes God puts us in places so we can make a difference. She sat directly in front of me, directly. And first thing she does is stands up and leans on the chair and turns around. She goes, well, what happened to you? When somebody says stuff like that to you, it's not good to give them any extra ammo. So I just said, I took a little fall. She goes, well, you better be ready. You can expect that you're going to swell up like a balloon on this plane. You're going to have pain. You're going to start throbbing. You can expect that people are going to look at you weird. You can expect that people aren't going to, aren't going to uh, think you're normal. You're, you, she had a list of 10 things of what I could expect. And I, she said, are you ready for that? And I said, not really. I expect I'm going to learn a lot from this experience. I expect that I'll meet a lot of kind and helpful people. I expect that I will heal with ease. And I just gave like three or four things of what I expect. Oh, she was mad. She whips around, sits down. And then, have you ever seen steam come off the top of somebody's head? <clears throat> oh, it was steaming. And her husband was sitting next to, next to her and he's like leaning into the wall like she's going to swing, you know. And oh, maybe three hours later, she stands up and turns around. She goes, why'd you say that to me? And I said, well, I wasn't saying it to you or at you. I was saying it for me because I know what I think about, I bring about. So I choose to focus on something different than the problems in the world. Oh man, she purr, turns around, steam coming off her head. She never slept a wink. Now from, from where I was in Dubai to Sydney was about mm, 15 hours, something like that. She never slept a wink. I'm just, you know, snoozing back there. And anyway, so she comes right at this, right before we go into Sydney they, and getting ready to announce, she stands up and she turns around and she said, do you think that if I would have thought differently when I had this accident, that I could have healed faster? And I said, well, what do you think? And she said, I think I've been a victim. Oh, her husband looks over. He, he, you know, he, he's like, oh, praise the Lord. I mean, it was it was really interesting to watch his little his little actions, but she didn't even see it. But she said, I have been a victim for three years now. I have been angry at everybody that let me fall, and it really wasn't anybody else's fault. It was a situation, and she said. Nobody has ever said the things you've said to me. I said, well, I'm sorry that, that you didn't have some support sooner in that manner. She goes, they kind of wanted to fix me and make me, make me stop, but I wasn't ready. She said, I, so I asked her another question. I said, so what are you going to do differently when you get off this plane? And she said, I'm going to think differently. I'm not going to blame anybody else. I'm not going to be a victim. I'm going to look for what I can do versus what I can't do. Uh, her, his, her husband grabbed her and kissed her. He goes, you're back. So sometimes we're put in those situations for a reason. You know, it's, it's without judgment. That's one other thing. If you have less judgment in your life, you can let go of judgment. You won't judge yourself so much. Because when you are judgmental of others, you guarantee you're going to judge yourself. Here's a couple of other thoughts. How does the I am not making enough of an impact relate to perfectionism and burnout? I'm not making enough of an impact. Who decides what's enough? You're the only one that decides that. So how, what, if you make one impact, if you made somebody smile today, you had an impact on that person's life that to them, it was a big deal. You made them feel special. So the only one that thinks you're not making enough impact probably is you. Maybe you're not making an impact out there in the global stage, but you are with your child or with your ailing parent. Look at where you are making an impact, not at where you're not. Because guarantee that's heading for burnout. And that is related to perfectionism. 
Release worry. My grandma used to say, worry is like being in a rocking chair. And you rock and you rock and you rock and you don't go anywhere. That, that worrying doesn't do you any good. We're, we're, what's going to make it different? So instead of worrying, ask, what can I do differently to feel better about the situation? How much control do I have over this situation? How can I be of service or support to this person versus worry for them? Because they don't know you're worrying. Look beyond that current circumstance. Release any attachment that doesn't allow you to be authentic, honest, and happy. Boy, that's beautiful. My motto is to live life with intention and find the joy in every situation. Definitely keeps me grounded. You see, you can live life with intention. You can have an intention. My intention for this call tonight was that I could have an impact on somebody, that somebody would see if they continued on that path, what that would do for them or to them long-term. I didn't say every person on the call, I had an intention to make a difference for somebody. And guess what? I don't own the outcome. I don't. There's a huge difference between having an intention and having an outcome. If you own the outcome for everybody else, you will always feel like you can't make it happen, that you're not enough because you have no control over their outcome. That's, that's a big, big thing. But thank you for that thought too. I'm glad you're grounded. A girlfriend reminded me that I always said, if you do it now, you won't have to do it later. That is true. Well, guess what? Let's do it now. If that is the right time to do it. So procrastination is when you have the opportunity to do it now and you don't. Now, people that put off and put off and put off. I have another sister. You're never going to know who's who in the zoo because there's a big family with a lot of girls. So I never say their names, but I have a sister who's very ill right now. And as she's very ill and she's now cleaning out her closets and she's, I asked if I can help her with some things and, I think she thinks she's going to go away. So what I'm really working on is how she's thinking so that she isn't thinking I got to get all my affairs in order because I'm going to die tomorrow. I don't want her to think that, but I also don't know that outcome. Um, all you can do is know you can give hundred percent of what you can, of what you're capable of in that moment. You just do your best. That's all you can do. Special needs mama here. That was hard to let go when, it, when he passed away. I'm honoring him in the business now. Embrace with grace. But you know how beautiful. You did the best you could with that son. Made a difference for him. He had a good life. Uh, and, and, and honor him. He's up in heaven going, Mom, I'm proud of you. I know you could do it. This is so great. And I, I know they can see us up there. But my parents and my grandparents are having fun. My mom is dancing with everybody, though. I mean, she's she loves to dance. If you stare, then you'll compare and you'll be in despair. Oh, gosh, I got to keep this chat box. Copy the chat box. There's good stuff in here. Copy it because it's so good. Ah, uh, Here's another one. Comparing is an insult to our creator. Wow. Because he made us the way we are. That's a beautiful because I am. There are hanging games. There are hanging games online. It's so sad. Oh, hanging. Oh, that is sad. People are learning to hang themselves. That is not good. If you can be anything, be kind. True. Who can I bless today is a great self-coaching question. I also find that being able to laugh at yourself and not take yourself so seriously is liberating. Laughing, it gets your endorphins going. Laughing is healthy. Find something to laugh about. You know, I was one time I was speaking at this event and this lady was pointing, pointing, pointing at me. And I finally said, you know, did you want to say something? She said, yes, your zipper's down. And, and, and you know, what are you going to do? I said, oh, I'm so glad you told me, you know, zip it up. What can you do? Laugh at yourself. It's okay. You don't need to be embarrassed. Life. What are they going to see? There's nothing they can see. There's always got an underwear. You're in pretty good shape. Uh, let's see what this one is. Oh, there's a poem. When I get old, I'm going to wear purple and red and spit. <laughs> uh, talks about 
you not caring about others perceptions that's I, that's a great poem i have to find that one the spit interesting i don't know that i'll do that but how sh how have i how have said i drove in front of a bus to save a child a kitten or a puppy people go speechless should have said i drove in front of a bus to save a child a kitten or a puppy people go speechless that's interesting mindset is important we got thousands of these so i'm going to go back over I'm going to come back to this later because I want to get through all this because you guys are so good. I love this chat. And we got a lot of things to release tonight, which I'm happy about. Here's the big thing. We learn from the past. We live in the present and look to the future. If you live this way, your future's bright. You can see for a long, long ways. I, that mountain, my mountain outside my window looks like that. The Ko'olau Mountains are beautiful you can see the old hawaiians that marched over those mountains and and i look out there to remind me i i i really look to the future i do but i love being present i love being present and i have lots of learning lessons from the past i can't change them i can work on today going forward and that's what's beautiful about coaching coaching is about today going forward it is not about the past so learn from the past, live in the present, look to the future and watch what's going to happen for you. So we have some questions and ahas. I'm going to go back to the chat box. If somebody does want to unmute yourself, I think you can and you, are, you can ask a question. But in the meantime, I'm going to go through this. I was working for home two hours after hysterectomy and at work the next day because I decided I was not going to wallow. Well, that was good as long as it didn't cause you to have longer recovery. So I have a friend that just had knee surgery and she goes, I'm doing great. I decided I was going to do great. Where I've talked to other friends that have knee surgery and they say, oh, it's going to be so painful. I'm going to be miserable. I've just been dreading this, blah, blah, blah. And that's kind of what happened. Here is Ariel said she made a good choice to travel on the same plane like you. Oh, that was nice was definitely turnaround time in her life. It, I, I, was, I was very, very, very blessed. Uh, um, better now than later. The present is a gift. That's why we call it the present. Boy, you guys are good. So anybody have questions, comments? I'm going to take the, I've got one more slide here that I just want to talk about. Make sure you join our community. Get involved with the SWA. We're here for you. We understand you. We know what you're going through in this business. We've got lots of free classes and things that are coming up. Take a picture of this so that you can go online and find us. We have membership. We have lots of good things along with our membership. Watch for upcoming events, then you'll see them there. Um, and we've got a, a class next week or next year. That class, I have my fan on and my paper blew away. That is not good. There's a class that's going to be the 16th of next month. It's another free class like this. We have a mastermind class that we do every month for our members. We have our advanced our certification coming up. So lots of good courses. Go to the events and make sure that you know where those are. So I'm going to take this off of share. And so we can see all of you, which I just love. There's so many great people here. Okay. So um let's see if there's anything else came in the chat or you can raise your hand or unmute yourself if you have a question because all of you i can tell are just really going for it here anybody do i see if you can unmute yourself if i don't see you you're all staying so somebody's got something to ask i can tell you that here's another message i agree there was something that was worth the price per month. Thank you. Something worth the price every month for, you know, uh, eight, actually it's $8.95 a month to become a member. So that's, that's very in, in, inexpensive. And um, we have lots of other things that we have going on. So make sure that you check that out. Lay, would you mind just for a minute, or Lee, I keep calling her Lay, because in Hawaii, everybody is Lay, Leilani. And, and, anyway, would you please ch share for a moment? You got onto the uh, telefriend and are doing the telebehavior. Are you able to unmute yourself? I yes. did. 
Okay. <laughs> what did that, what, what did you appreciate about that program for, it's, a, it's something that we've offered through DSA, there's a whole insurance program for you. What would you like to share? No, I, I've used um, both the telehealth and the telebehavior portion of it. Um, and like with the telehealth, I was sick for six weeks because I'm kind of stubborn and don't go to the doctor. And the health insurance I have at my job is like, it keeps me from, it lets them say I'm insured, basically. Oh. <laughs> like it really doesn't cover anything. Mm. And um, I had had a very bad breakup at the beginning of this year and just haven't dealt with it well because there's a lot of background history. And I was when Nikki had talked about it, I'm like, you know, co-pays would be way more than $50 a month. And, you know, I go, I got a great therapist that I talked to who I really, really like. We think I either am either, I know I'm, I know I have a very high IQ, but I may have also ADHD, which we're dealing with, ah. which um, has just come out, which I don't, I probably wouldn't have done that. And honestly, um, I've gone to therapy in the past because I just had a very bad childhood and um, part of it was court ordered because I had to go and, you know, and whenever I go, I just sit there and cry and I didn't want to pay a copay to sit there and cry, but I'll pay $50 a month for all my copay. You know, it just, yeah. it makes it, it was, and I'm weird that way, but I saw a huge value in it. And I said, well, if I talk for two minutes and I'm, it's only, you know, was it, um, uh, six twenty five a week or something? No, twelve uh twelve seventy twelve fifty a week. Mm -hmm. Unlimited. So you can go as much as you want. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Lee, Lee for and the sharing that. is really good too because they've called in and I have a I have uh, I need to keep antibiotics on hand. And they're like, sure, no problem. We'll call it in for you. So it's, really, we, really good benefits. Doctor. We've yes. got really good benefits for really our members. Good. And thank you, Lee, for sharing that. She just told me that when we got on the line, and I thought. Oh, I want you to know, because some people don't even know we have all the med major medical, we have group insurance, we have all those things. So take a look at that. And that will allow you to recruit more people too, because people stay in a job they hate because they need benefits. And I don't want that to happen to you. So anybody have a question or something that you would want to be coached around that you're just not quite sure how to get rid of that, or you're at burnout and you're wondering, what do I do now? I hope you got some ideas, but there might be something else. Uh, I told all my friends they needed to join just for the program. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for the insightful session. Somebody had a meeting. Uh, I agree there was something that, that is worthwhile. So I'm, I'm kind of at the end of my chat, but I'm all yours. I'll stay on if you, if you have questions or thoughts or something that you'd like to cover. I have a question for you, Nikki. Yes, is this Phyllis? Yes. Okay, yes, Miss Phyllis. Thinking about, I guess, basically kind of letting go of what other people think, along with having a feeling of love for them. You know, so it's kind of like that uh, bit of rejection and concern around what the result might be, but also feeling, um, how do I combine those together in a way that I guess it's like a thinking of the past and thinking of the future. Mm -hmm. mm, it can be. So what, what I heard you say was that, how can you not care about what they think about you, but yet you, you really care about them? Yes, that, was that, yeah, uh -huh. exactly. Yeah, I, I, cause I am a heart person. I work with kids and mm. you know, so I'm naturally, that's why I was saying, I think of for myself, if I spoke to myself as I was to a little kid, I'd be like, good job, well mm. done. So how can you care and love somebody and not believe or trust every single thing that they say? Or that they'll, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. It's like basically a judgment thing. Mm. And so it, 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 is there a little bit of guilt around that, that if I don't care what they think, then I don't care about them? I don't think so. Okay. So you can separate those two. You care about them as a person. And, and that's why what they're thinking or saying is bothering you versus being able to disconnect that. Yes. Okay. So what happens if what they're saying about you or to you is not your truth? Well, 
right? So I don't necessarily need to agree with what they're saying mm -hmm. because it's mm. not something that resonates with me. Yeah. So right. how important is it if it's not your truth? Right. It keeps decisions really easy, doesn't it? So you can mm. still value them and love them as a person, but um, recognize it's not part of my, what I value and what my truths are, right? Wow. You, you figured okay. that out quite quickly, Phyllis. That, that, you're a very insightful person. And, and what a good friend you would be because you can love somebody, but just not necessarily love how they show up sometimes. Or, or needing to agree in opinion. Walking with a friend yesterday I've known since grade one. Mm. So like almost, you know, a long time, right? Like yes. over 50 years. And yes. we're both able to have a, a difference of opinion and love each other and explore it. So I guess really is that my question for you is, I guess continuing the confidence in not getting personally attached to how people respond to what I'm offering. Mm. And um, I know so, the logic of it. I understand the logic, you know? So it's, in the sales part, you mean that to not getting personally attached if they don't yes. agree with what you're doing? Okay. So how often do you agree with everything that's going on around you? Uh, maximum probably 50%. Okay, so it's not all the time. So same, right. same with other people. They don't agree with everything that's going on around them. They agree with some of the things that are going on around them. Right. So if you didn't think this pie tasted good, it didn't taste good to you, you didn't like the, how that pie tasted, mm -hmm. does that mean you don't like the person or that the pie just didn't taste good? Yeah, the pie just didn't taste good. It's simple. So is yeah. this situation when people see what you're doing differently than you see it, is that really about you or about them? It's about them for sure. Mm. So if it's about them, how much control do you have over them? I don't. I have control over myself and let mm. them be as they. Yeah, because I know I've lived over 500,000 hours. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm like, uh -huh. How could I know someone else's life? that's it that you can't so part of this is you knowing you don't you can't control other people you can control you and so it's how you react or respond to that situation so i'm going to move to training for everybody for a minute those were coaching questions with her so the training side of that is if she doesn't like what i'm selling and I get upset over that. Well, you know, you, God, you're stupid. It's a really good deal. And this product is great. And it'll make a difference for you and blah, 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 blah. How I reacted, put a wedge between that relationship. Whereas if I would have said, boy, I understand what you're saying there. When you're ready to live healthier or that when you're ready to, you know, try something new, let me know. I'm here. I really want to support you because I care about you. But I totally see where you are right now. Who do you know that would enjoy this product? Who do you know, if it was a nutritional product, that would like to live a healthier a life with right. more energy? Uh, she still can be a source of referral. She just maybe is not ready to buy it. And maybe she didn't have the money right now and we didn't, she didn't want to say that. So I can't make her decision be about me. It's about her. Right. And no, when I come from my heart then she feels that authenticity you've got it and so then her answer is more authentic of herself and that's what i want i want the, it. both sides of that mm -hmm. that's and exactly that what it is yeah okay you got to figure it out you good for you phyllis thank yeah. you for bringing that up for other people here's a couple things in the chat box let's see what come comes up here you're very welcome Wonderful way to approach different ways to replace burnout and empowering. Thank you. That was a gift. Listen to understand is a key important thing. Showing interest of what others need to say. You're always being interested in others. It's a good start to generate a common interest or empathy. One thing that I noticed in society is that it seems to be a trend. If we don't agree with them, then I will not speak to you or block you or something like that. 
people are less open to differences. And that is, a, and that's sad because some of the most beautiful songs are written in minor keys. But thank you for sharing that. Here's the thing about this folks. And I, I don't know if it's political. I don't know what it all is, but it's just like this thing with, with, with the vaccine. Uh, dangerous to even bring up a political thing on a call like this, but it's just something that has come up recently. I know people that do not want that vaccine and they're not going to get it. Me trying to convince them, me trying to tell them they're wrong, me trying to tell them that they that they're not, um, they don't care about humanity or society is not going to change their opinion. So some things we've got to learn to release and let go of and I feel bad if they die. I will. I feel bad. But guess what? I, I can't do anything about that. So sometimes we've got to release again what we do not have control over. And we have no control over other people and what they're thinking and what they're going to do. And making them wrong is not going to support anybody. So anybody else, because I, I know we're over time, but is there somebody that has a question or comment or thought or you'd like to be coached around something? Either raise your hand or unmute yourself and I'm here for you. This was a fun call for me. I just loved that everybody was so interactive. Yay. Anyone else? Because you're still here. You want something out of this. So tell me what that is. I just love, love, love to listen to you and then listen to everybody else. Oh, thank, thank you for everything. Thank you, Julieta. <laughs> it was beautiful to have you participate and also to have you um, write into the chat box. And, and Julieta, I, I am so glad that you, um, that somebody asked me to chip, to put in the translation thing because I know I can talk fast. And so and we have a lot of people on here that English may be your second language. And, and it's hard when it's your first language when I start doing guests up to 1500 miles per hour. So thank you. <laughs> That's amazing. I was to how you did that because it's great. At least uh, you can look, read it and listening to it at the same time makes it much better. Yes, so, yes, it yes. does. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? How can I support you? And and by the way, oh, that's Anna. So yes, Anna. Nikki, uh, I'm just basking in your light. Um, I'm an attorney and a coach. Uh, oh, I, was, I was very much a perfectionist and uh, an overachiever and uh, I was miserable and I was alone because nobody wants a perfectionist uh, yes. around them. It's so hard to be around somebody that's a perfectionist. Um, but I, I must confess, I still do the towel thing. And I, I would not, I would not be able to do it, turn it upside down for even a second. But, uh. you know, it's the, it's the important stuff that I have learned to let go of. But I'm very very much OCD in doing a flower arrangement or my, my house is always perfect, everything is perfect. Uh, however, the big things that made me anxious before I have released. Um, I did that yeah. through two years of training in, to become a coach and a coaching, it's, it's wow. not easy. And you know what I found and what I have loved about your, um, your entire, uh, speech today and uh, this is why why coaching is so powerful because i it went is. with i hear lay when she said i've been to therapy and whatever and i've been to a psycho uh, psychoanalysis forever and ever you know and uh, mm. bad childhoods and whatever so you know coaching doesn't go into what it is that made you a perfectionist where did you learn this it's just like let go of it already Okay, uh -huh. whatever you want to elaborate on how deep into your soul you became that way, get rid of it. That's yeah. it. And it's as easy as making a choice, as saying, I, I'm getting yeah. rid of it. I don't care to explore how it came to be. Ah. Yeah. Get rid of it. So I'm just basking in your life. That's why I haven't hung up. It's oh, beautiful. thank you. Here, Anna knows this as a coach. Coaching is about today moving forward. It isn't about the past. And it, and it is true. We, we, I don't care how you were yesterday. Today, you can make a decision to do something different, to think different, to be different, to, to have more joy in your life. You can make that choice today. Just like the lady on the airplane. She chose something different and let go of the past. Because resentment and other things happen when we're hanging on to that past. 
Anna, I'm curious, how did you find out about this call today? Uh, Thermomix invited me. I, uh, I became, I joined Thermomix being an attorney uh, because of moments like this, uh -huh. because of being able to share, because of being able to coach. Uh, I became a consultant. I became a team leader three months later. Uh, and um, I, I'm loving it just because it allows me to start conversations. It's just an excuse. And I love to cook. Are you in so, the U.S. or are you in Australia? I'm in the U.S. I'm in Parkland, Florida. I'm originally from Colombia, from Cartagena, Colombia. Uh, and I'm in the U.S. I'm in Parkland. Uh, and I'm in RLE. Yeah. And I see a couple of Thermomix friends with us today. And uh, yes. so so mm -hmm. so you, you probably you met today? my daughter, Grace, along the way, because she's done yeah. quite a bit. For Thermomix yes. US. So I uh, yes. thank you for joining us and being and here. We'd love to have beautiful. you participate in our coach school because it's very oh. specific to the direct selling profession. You I love would love that. to. I would love yeah. to. Check anything that out. You can, if anything I can be around you, uh, even to, to learn by osmosis is something will rub off. You're just magnificent. Thank you. So thank much. you, honey. Thank you. Anyone else with something I can do to support you or a question or a comment or, you know, I, I can't see who that is. Who is that? You were cutting out on me. Julieta. Yeah. I need to go. I, we, I just going to say bye, but it was good to, to listen to you. And then, uh, you know, we're in the elite management program and it's wonderful. And I think oh, good. I think it's great. Beautiful. Uh, well, tips and I'm so glad come to make sure you come to those group coaching calls for the elite group. It's really a special, special time. Yeah. Thanks. Yes. And Eric and my team, and there were a couple of them, like four today. So I'm so happy to hear what they say uh, to uh, see how they felt. But I think uh, this is going to grow and grow. Well, thank you. Good. Well, everybody have a blessed day. I, I, if you want to share whatever you, was the most important thing that you learned, the biggest takeaway for you, please drop it into the box. I'd love to hear from you. Ah, yeah, Grace is going to be in Las Vegas with you guys, by the way. That's going to be really fun for her. Um, relax, relate, and release. That's a beautiful thought. Create a different world. A lot of good, good, good um, thoughts forever. I, I love this chat box today. I, I really, if you can copy it and paste it onto a Word document, then you can have some of those great quotes and, and the rest of that. It'll be good for you. Take care, everyone. Have a blessed day. I look forward to meeting you in person one day soon. Aloha.